What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Reacher Season 2, Episode 3 today guys. I'm looking forward to getting into it. Uh, the last episode picked up the story, moved a bit faster. We know that there's several members of the Special Investigators team that are dead now. Bodies have been found. They've been lying there for a long time. They were all tortured and killed in the same way they biffed out of the helicopter. But left to right, right? Reacher's getting a little bit pissed about it. The others are pissed as well, but in their own way. We've gotten to see that they can all handle... Obviously, we knew that they were going to be able to because they were part of the special team, right? And no doubt, part of Reacher's uh, protocol in this team would have been to upskill and retrain them as well. So we've definitely seen that. And it is cool to see the team environment in play where everyone is sharp. They're all aware. They're all looking for the same things because they all worked together for years, right? The great thing is you've got four of them working together and you're all working in each other's blind spots, which is just fantastic. It's a great way to be in a team, right? So even if you miss something in the moment, one of the other three is going to pick it up. So you've always got this really tight picture forming and putting the puzzle together that they can try and solve what's happening out there. And hopefully get to New York and start to piece some things together and hopefully get a lead on Robert Patrick's character. Apart from that, guys, the show is actually taking off nicely. and It's more interesting than I thought it would be, and it's definitely, I love the pacing that's happening now. So anyway, guys, let's get straight into episode three, see what happens. It was right there while it all happened. Enough! We've already got a bead on your buddies in Atlantic City, so... You're not saving them by not talking. <laughs> Dude, you had to know that was gonna happen. Okay. Out of the helicopter he goes. Oh, he's the one that did... Breaking their legs? Oh, he's going to get some serious big gun in the end, we know that. Oh, he broke their shins first. Oh, crap. This guy's a fuckwit. Get him ready. Oh, that guy's a son of a bitch. He was still alive when they dumped him. You talk, or you fly, asshole. Holy shit. I'm so funny. <laughs> I'm just thinking. What the big guy's gonna do to you? <laughs> nice. Awesome. He was a good soldier. Still didn't rat the team out. Who the hell was he talking about? The guy that's coming for your ass, dude. I'll take the 17, two 19s, that Beretta, and three burners. <laughs> well, once you apply for your permit, there's a seven-day waiting period. Rules say you can lend these firearms to a friend. Nice to meet you, friend. I'm Joe Gordon. <laughs> Frank Majeski, pleasure's mine. And you must know that a legal temporary transfer between family and friends can only be used for sporting purposes. So I assume you're going to be target shooting or hunting. <laughs> a combination of both. Well, while also uh... necessitates the firearms be back within an eight-hour period. Technically, Every moment in time exists within an eight-hour period. I'm sure you're aware that uh, transferred firearms can only be used in the presence and supervision <laughs> oh, I love this of guy. a legal owner, and that would be me. How about you be with me in spirit, Frank? <laughs> well, if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome, though. A little bit scary, but awesome. <laughs> I like my Glock 17. That is a Glock 17. Just listening to a 200 hitter complain about his new bat. Hey, I'm a great shot. You're average. Dixon, back me up here. That time in Biloxi. Was the luckiest shot I've ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> Man, you couldn't hit a donkey's ass with a banjo. Screw you guys. All I'm saying is I want to use my own personal sidearm, OK? One, a bad carpenter complains about his tools. And two, you really want to get busted shooting people with a gun registered in your name? Beretta 92. Like Swan used to carry. You know, these guys we're going after have to be pretty good if they've taken down four of us. Any reason I shouldn't pull over? You think anyone found out about the friends you and Dixon made in Atlantic City? Unless they decided to report concrete. Well, maybe the pawn shop owner set the cops on our tail. Wake me up if something happens. I'm going to be arrested, but I got a feeling it's going to take a while. I'll pay you back the bail money. Don't forget the room and the plane ticket. What are you waiting for? Hands on the roof, Paul Bunyan. How can I be a service? You went to law school, right? Yeah, Rutgers. So, kinda. 
You can kiss my ass. This guy's my lawyer. He'll feel. Shit. If you separate us during transport, you'll be creating a contestable issue. None of that is remotely accurate. Rutgers. <laughs> I knew you guys would get scarce once I was unjustly assaulted, so I pulled all the security footage from the car rental companies at the airports until I saw you talking to that number in a business suit. Why do you have toys back here? Hey, put that away. Oh, is this your icebreakers for the kitties on the playground? That ain't even funny. Francis Neely, Carla Dixon? This parking pass was found in a person of interest's car. New Age has over a thousand employees. The victims happen to be our friends. I'll see what I can find. Thank you. For the record, that was a sucker punch, okay? Technically, the airbag sucker punched you. I beat you up. Fair fight, I'll turn your lights out. And when this is all over, <laughs> we're gonna go again and I'm gonna beat your ass to the ground. Well, why don't you <laughs> just take off the cuffs or send the arrest and you guys can settle it right here. What kind of lawyer are you? <laughs> the best the 91st ranked law school in the country can produce. I got bad news. Our friend Sanchez and Orozco are dead. I heard directly from the Catskill PD. How the hell you guys know about that? Guess we're just two steps ahead of you, Sipowitz. And if you want me to arrest you and put you in the tombs, I can make that happen. But that's not gonna solve these murders. And me and you both wanting that is the one thing we have in common. Okay. When I looked into the one tenth, Calvin Franz's phone logs had multiple calls, but he didn't call you, though. Why is that? I don't have a phone. Now you're all being killed off. Something's going on, and I think you guys know things. Look, I just want to get to the bottom of this shit. Okay. If we share what we've got, you better have something for us in return. He's in restraints, but he's still bagging. Pass six three two two was issued to a man named Trevor Seropian. Did a murderer really come here for a job interview? That's what we're gonna find out. She's generally concerned about it. Six hundred and fifty at a hundred k. What the hell is being sold? That's worth sixty five million. It could be a transfer of $65 million, a $65 million cover-up, a $65 million bribe. Well, whatever your friends were involved in, it was big enough to get them killed. Read into it any way you want. I'm reading an insinuation that my friends are criminals. And if my read's correct, you and I are going to have another problem. I'm a detective. I got to be open to all the possibilities, even the ones you might not like. Well, there's one possibility I've been very open to, that it's you who's in on this. I'm no dirty cop. Seems like you want to keep things off the books. Say I'm dirty again, see what happens. Tough talk when I'm cuffed. <laughs> Alright, these two are pretty good. They're made of the same stuff. I don't think you can take reach of them. I don't take envelopes. You got that? He has got conviction. He's a straight cop. And, uh, detective. Awesome. We got a suspect. He's looking up at the giant and he's not backing down. Printer in Franz's office. Had the tech geeks look it over. They found an unfinished job in the queue. You're not the only good investigator in the room. Good call. Azari Mahmoud. He's known to Interpol as a weapons broker. He's a ghost. No pictures of him anywhere. Sanchez and Rosco dug this guy up for France. Yeah, um, it's the same initials. Same initials as what? The list of aliases we found on a flash drive that belonged to France. This guy's name most likely isn't Azari Mahmoud. You're going to want DHS to flag all of his aliases. It's a pretty good reluctant team up here. This case just got a whole lot bigger than what we thought it was. Yeah, for sure. This guy probably had a few too many soda pops, got handsy with some guy's girl, push, shove, from outside, bang, bang. What'd you find out? We showed pictures of Private Sims to all the employees. No one recognized him. His pant cuffs are wet. A couple potholes back there filled with last night's rain. He was running for his life. Look how the ink smudged. Came off a glassine wrapper. Lieutenant Colonel. Oh, cut the shit, Reacher. I'm in my Wranglers, for Christ's sake. So what do we have here? The kid from our base dealing drugs? I don't want to assume. Assumptions kill. This is what the 110th was created for, right? Unit team, open the file and dig in. Roger that. Swan, you were half right. It's a fighter kite. I saw these all the time in Afghanistan. Dixon. Boss. The aviation fuel case. Let's pull that file. I might know what was weighing down all those planes. We're going to find those fuckers, and they're going to learn exactly why you do not mess with the special investigators. Roger. Major sure knew what he was doing when he put us together, didn't he? 
Harry's got good instincts. Harry's got good everything. Ew. <laughs> he keeps everybody at a distance except you. That's well, just because I don't press the issue. And yet you two are the closest in the one-tenth. Mm. So how'd that happen? Right, each page is a month, seven of them. But not every month has the same amount of days. It's not just any seven months, it's actually the last seven months. Oh, I mean, you should have seen it. Biloxi police chief said it was the most incredible shot he'd ever seen. I agree. It's like Mr. Magoo finally finding the staircase. <laughs> Eat shit. We got a recent hit on this AM guy. Recent, like, as soon as AM checks in, we got him. Thank God really is just trying to do his job. It's cool. He knows he's being watched. Of course he does. He's a faceless assassin. They're not good at blending in, are they? Yeah. I've been delayed. Authorities were waiting for me at the airport. My IDs are burned. But how are you gonna get into New York without an ID? This guy's awesome. Shit, she's right. Of course she's right. It's numbers. Hello, is this Miss Godelsman of 950 Emerson Drive? I found Trevor Seropian's wallet on the sidewalk. A picture has a scar on his face. Yes. That's Trevor. Should we go see what we can find? Right after we make a stop at the hardware store. Oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> they made an IE take from the hardware store. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Tear left, negative. That door's a distraction. Here we go. Oh, you should have hand. <laughs> Through the door behind you. <laughs> oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> There's a lot of people in this house. Oh, these guys are ready. Bring out your knives, dude. You know that knives is a specialty. Deep breath, take out his hands. Then work your way up. Hands, arms, face. Hands, arms, face, dude. Boom. Oh, nice. Let's go, Dixon. Brass knuckles. He's heading up. Oh! <laughs> it's a stabby arm. Beautiful. Empty. Good shot. Donkey's ass, meet banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bulletproof vest. Other than this household's dead, buddy. All clear upstairs. Yep, they were being watched, huh? Right, she's going across the rooftops. He's going to throw at her. <laughs> uh. Who is this guy? Who sent you? Brian Collins. Who do you work for? Dude's having a heart attack. Are you having a heart attack? <laughs> gotta be kidding me. <laughs> hey, Collins! <laughs> really? <laughs> Asshole. Have to assume no survivors? No. Guy in the car was from New Age, outside muscle. Guy who just left dead was here to make sure they got the job done. Bet you wish you had a change of clothes now, huh? Have a feeling the night's not done with us yet. A lot of angry and a lot of balds about to blow into town. <laughs> Evening, Russo. Close the door. A pipe bomb? In suburban fucking Queens? <laughs> what were you thinking? We were thinking we were being set up, and there were hitmen who tried to kill us in Atlantic City. 
So you were never going to mention that? While O'Donnell and I were being unlawfully detained by you, Neely and Dixon visited New Age. An assassin left his address. We had the same question. Someone wanted us to check it out. So you four guys just decided to walk into a place where you knew people were waiting to kill you? Well, in our defense, we did blow it up first. Unfucking believable <laughs> We got confirmation this all goes through New Age. So you get this from the guy you shot, blew up, or the asshole who died by barbecue? <laughs> he died from trans fats. <laughs> Where's his car? We decided to take it with us last minute. Plate swap parked out back. <laughs> if we're gonna help each other, I gotta know that you guys are not gonna go rogue. AM never showed up at the airport. So he knows he's being watched. But there's no way his plan, whatever it is, isn't still in motion. He's a strike up. In the meantime, I could use this to support a warrant on New Age. And let me give you a number so you don't have to come around where you're not wanted every time you need to talk. I thought you didn't have a phone. It's not mine. It belonged to someone I killed. <laughs> no more fucking cowboy shit. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do now, boss? Saddle up. Cause we're about to do a whole lot of cowboy shit. <laughs> Assignments. Server room. HR. Director of Operations Office. I'll take everything else. No more than two minutes to get where you can and meet at Dixon's car. And if I'm late, don't wait for me. Who I'm, Major? Gotta cover some ground pretty quick. This is so cool watching the team move. And they're cleaning that place out. There'll be someone waiting for him. Oh, what's on the wall? Who is it? You see Reacher? Nope. But he said not to wait for him. Roger. We gotta go. Moving. No, I'm not leaving him here. He said go. We go. Yep. Can't believe you were gonna leave me. <laughs> Asshole. Dixon. Yeah. Torch. No fucking way. Holy shit, it's Swan. He was working at New Age with the people who've been trying to kill us. Okay. All right, guys, that was another good episode. You know, the story's moving along super fast now, and it looks like Swan was somehow involved. The question is, was Swan the guy that uncovered everything then went to the rest of the team? Or was Swan, like Breacher said, working with them right from the beginning and therefore working against the team? But, uh, yeah, another great episode, like I say, and all the humors there, especially the dynamics with the four of them giving each other shit left, right, and center. Um, I love the dry humor. I love that we're, we're getting to see that uh, textbook Reacher back again, right? You know, with his one-liners and he's dry and he's sort of abrupt and he's so robotic half the time, isn't he? And that's what makes him so funny. And uh, even his own team are just like, they look at him sometimes like, what the fuck? And it's just so funny to see that dynamic in the show and in his character. So yeah, the team's badass, four of them going in with their homemade IED blowing up the assassin house and then taking them all out. There were a couple of good fights in there though, right? A couple of them put up a good fight. They had vests, they were ready. But it's kind of weird that their, what would you call them, their Overwatch guy, unfit, older, died of a heart attack. That's kind of weird, you know, because in that situation you'd think the last man down needs to be one capable of carrying that message out to everyone else uh, up the chain, right? And that guy was not in a fit condition to be able to do that, so... They were obviously just hoping he's able to drive away, which he wasn't able to because a barbecue went through his window. But yes, yeah, Swan in the picture, that's definitely pointing to something. And I think it's possible we're erring on the side of bad rather than good. And I think if he is in there with Robert Patrick's character, he's got some shit coming his way, especially if he went against the team. I don't know, but yeah, I'm enjoying it, guys. I'm really enjoying the season. It is way better than I thought it would be. And interesting as well, you know. But anyway, guys, what did you think of this episode? Put the comments down below. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. Any hints, tips, any theories, anything you may know from the books, put that down below as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But um, as usual, guys, give this a like, share it around, all that other good stuff. I really appreciate you. And uh, that's going to be it for me on this video. I'll catch you on the next episode.